Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to the daily quiz for today. Before we begin, another reminder: we are now live on Telegram as well. Do join the Telegram group by clicking on the link given in the description of the video, where you will get all the latest current affairs updates related to the UPSC examination from Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Now let's begin with question number one on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to COVID-19 vaccines. Number one. Bharat Biotech's COVID-19 recombinant nasal vaccine has been approved by the Ministry of Health's Central Drugs Standard Control Organization for primary immunization of those aged 12 years or above in emergency situations. Number two, nasal vaccines aim to overcome potential difficulties with mass vaccination and reduce the cost by doing away with the need for needles and syringes. Third. According to experts, there is very little evidence to back the effectiveness of the nasal route of delivery so far, and apart from some flu vaccines, attempts to deliver vaccine like this have not been successful. You have to choose from these given statements. Whether only one of these statements is incorrect or multiple statements are incorrect, the correct answer here is A. Out of these three, only one is incorrect, which is the first one. The reason why the first one is incorrect is because it is approved for people aged 18 years or above in emergency situations and not 12 years. Second and the third statements are true. As you know, this was a news covered widely in the newspapers today. That is, the Indian government finally has given its approval for the first nasal vaccine for COVID-19 in India that will only be used in emergency situations for those people who have not been immunized so far. So it will not be given as a booster dose specifically. As we know, for this vaccine specifically, only two drops are needed in each nostril, and you can use it on your own. You do not require any medical specialist, any nurse, to come and administer this vaccine to you. And that is why it will be extremely helpful to ensure that people can get this vaccine while sitting at their home without even getting to go out anywhere. This is called. in covac and is manufactured by bharat biotech which is the same company that has been producing the co vaccine as well next question number 2 consider the following statements with regards to satluj yamuna link canal number 1 once completed it will enable sharing of the waters of the rivers ravi and bias between haryana and punjab second in 1982 the then prime minister indira gandhi launched the construction of the satluj yamuna link canal third Water resources are under the state list while the parliament has the power to make laws regarding the interstate rivers under the union list which of these given statements is or are correct the correct answer to this question will be d all the three given statements about the satluj yamuna canal are absolutely correct as you know this is a canal that has been in news for the past 40 years now The reason why this is still in the news is that the Punjab government has not agreed to construct its side of the canal for a long, long time. Even after intervention of the Supreme Court and the central government multiple times, the Punjab government still is not holding up its end of the bargain, saying that they require more water, especially in the dry season, and they can't build this canal because that will lead to diversion of a lot of water to Haryana. This is the canal, as you can see. This 92 kilometer part of the canal, which has to be built in Haryana, has already been built by the Haryana government. On the other hand, this part of the canal that has to be built in Punjab, that has not been built. This is what remains at the center of the dispute. Center government has told the Supreme Court that Punjab is not cooperating in resolving the Satluj Yamuna link canal dispute. The point is. irrespective of whichever government comes to power in punjab the aam aadmi party government the congress government the akali dal all of these government are on the same page that they don't want this link canal to be built in punjab next question number 3 which of the following supreme court cases are related to section 66a of the information technology act of 2000 the lilith thomas case the shreya singhal case the suresh kumar kaushal case or justice k s putta swami case The correct answer here is B, Shreya Singhal case. All these cases are very, very important cases of the Supreme Court. Lily Thomas case was the case where the Supreme Court had said that any legislator getting a jail term of two years or more will be immediately disqualified without waiting for appeal. Suresh Kumar Kaushal case was the case in which the Supreme Court overturned the Delhi High Court judgment. when delhi high court said that section 377 should be decriminalized 
So Supreme Court actually brought back Section 377 regarding homosexuality in this particular case. Although now the Supreme Court has held it to be unconstitutional, but in 2013 case they had overturned what Delhi High Court had said. K.S. Puttaswamy case is a very very important case again where the Supreme Court had said that right to privacy is also a part of your fundamental right. The reason why this particular section of the IT Act is in the news is because the Supreme Court has expressed serious concerns that despite the Supreme Court saying that section 66A of the IT Act is unconstitutional, there are several FIRs that are being registered under this Act. And the Supreme Court has said that we are really concerned about this, that this should not happen. The court said this while hearing an appeal in the case filed by the NGO called People's Union for Civil Liberties. The article tells you that in March 2015, in the Shreya Shingal case, the Supreme Court struck down Section 66A of the IT Act of 2000. Next, question number four. Consider the following statements. Number one, the cheetah is believed to have disappeared from the Indian landscape when Maharaja Ramanuj Pratap Singh Dio of Korea in present-day Chhattisgarh hunted and shot the last three recorded Asiatic cheetahs in India in 1947. Second, cheetah was declared extinct from India in 1952. And third, under the Intercontinental Cheetah Translocation Project at the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh, eight cheetahs have been brought from South Africa. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer to this question is A. One and two are correct. The third statement is wrong. Yes, the government of India has recently inaugurated Project Cheetah, under which eight cheetahs will be introduced back in India in a hope that this will now populate the cheetah population in India to a large extent. But they have not been brought from South Africa, rather they are being brought from Namibia. That is why the third statement here is wrong. All the details about the Project Cheetah that will be launched by the Prime Minister are given in this article of the Indian Express. As you can see, the last cheetah in India died in 1947 and the species was declared extinct in 1952. The translocation of the eight cheetahs will be done from Namibia to India and a big function has been planned by the government of India at the Kuno National Park for this project to begin. Next is a previous year question from 2019. Which of the following statements are correct about the deposits of methane hydrate? Number one. Global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits. Second, large deposits of methane hydrates are found in Arctic tundra and under the sea floor. Third, methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after a decade or two. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer to this question is D. All the three given statements are correct. Methane is found in the hydrate form. This is how it actually looks. Most of it is found as you can see in the permafrost. It is found in the Arctic tundra. That is why with global warming, when the temperatures increase and these permafrost start to melt down, there is a high chance that this methane gas will actually be released. First and the second statements thus are true. Third is also true. Methane in atmosphere will oxidize to carbon dioxide after a couple of decades. Usually, this is where you can find the methane hydrates that are deposited below the sea floor. Not just this, you also find the methane hydrates in the sedimentary rocks below the Arctic permafrost. Permafrost means that area of the Arctic that is permanently frozen. Similarly, you also find them in the continental margins as a photo that we just saw. Deep water sediments, under arctic ice, these are the places where most methane hydrates are actually found. Next, we have a fact of the day and today we will be discussing about the idea of climate reparations. Now, the word reparations has been in the news for quite a long time now. The word reparation simply means that in the past, if you have done something wrong, let's say issue of slavery in the US or let's say the British colonialism over most parts of the world, then today they owe certain damages. That is the blacks, for example, in USA should be given certain incentives by the government or by the white people because they were subjected to slavery earlier. Similarly, colonies of Britain, etc., such as India, deserve certain reparations, deserve certain incentives from Britain. That is the idea of reparation. Idea of climate reparation is 
that because the climate has mostly been damaged by the rich nation, by the developed nations, they owe some damages to be paid to the poor nations. This is written with respect to what is happening in Pakistan, the country that is facing the worst flooding disaster in its entire history. Pakistan has been demanding reparations from the West, compensation specifically from the Western nations, saying that they owe this to the country. As you know, billions and billions of dollars of worth of property has been damaged. Thousands of people have lost their lives in Pakistan. Whenever we have any climate change summit, we always say that developed nations have promised that they will contribute $100 billion to climate change efforts in the developing nations. But all these promises have not been fulfilled. This is why the developed nations have a responsibility towards the developing nations. The US, European Union, UK, all of these have contributed for over 50% of the emissions in the entire world. If you actually see the developed nations, their development happened because of them harming the environment to such a large extent. And because this is now coming back to harm the developing nations, the developing nations deserve certain damages to be paid. The developed nations, however, say that now every nation should cut their emissions. Even developing nations such as India should also cut down their emissions. So rather than accepting their responsibility, they have been transferring their responsibility towards the developing nations. As you know, the UNFCCC, that is the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, in 1994 laid down principles for the global efforts to fight against the climate change. It is under this agreement that $100 billion amount would be given from richer countries to the developing world to fight against climate change, but that has not happened so far. Even some of the help that the developed nations have been giving is in the form of loan and not grants, meaning that that help or that loan has to be returned back with interest. Recently, there was a report that came out from the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Efforts, which said that United Nations alone has inflicted close to $2 trillion in damages to other nations due to its emissions. The economic loss from cyclones, for example, in India and Bangladesh in 2020 alone has been close to $15 billion, and some of it can be directly attributed to the climate change that has happened because of unlimited emissions from the developed nations in the 19th and in the 20th century. This is where the idea of climate reparations comes into the debate. This is it for today's daily quiz video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day ahead.